ladies and gentlemen. It looks like there's no marching going on tonight. However, if we're hanging out here, we might as well discuss some better ideas for society, right? Surely everyone, like, everyone say yes if they recognize there's massive problems in the world. Okay, would you like to get angry about those problems or would you like to get proactive about them? Okay, so, let's think about this, right? The monetary system is mathematically unsustainable. Yes! Yep. It's an infinite growth paradigm based on a planet of virtually finite resources. That, that kind of behavior, we call that cancer, right? So we need to think of how we can orient the society without the need for a monetary system. Think about it, we've got the scientific understanding and the technology to provide for everyone's needs. So why don't we just do that? We have a monetary system standing in between us and the resources we need to survive. And think about it, money is not something we have always had. We only invented money about uh, about 12,000 years ago, after we went through the Neolithic Revolution. That's when human beings stopped being nomadic, we started to settle down, we created agriculture, and we had to create barter systems, because we we're only subsisting on a small amount of resources around where we settled. So we had to trade with everyone else, and we didn't have the technology to provide a high standard of living. Now, we do have the technology to provide a high standard of living. We do have the scientific understanding to provide that. So, we need to think about this in terms of a baby and their nappies, okay? Think of a baby, in this analogy, the baby is society and nappies are money, right? Sure, money was needed at a certain point in time because we didn't have those, those technological needs to provide for everyone. So we use the monetary system. But our technology has now grown to the point where the technology is used to effectively rate the planet of its resources, all for economic growth, okay? The solution is that we use that technology wisely to think, okay, how do we arrive at the decision of meeting everyone's needs at a high standard of living without causing damage to the ecosystem or damage to ourselves. And we have that we have that, that ability now. Okay? We need to rally for something, not just against something. Do you, do you what, who was here a few years uh, a few years ago when there was a lot of violence at this event? So put your hand up. How many of you actually agreed with that violence? No, I don't, I don't think anyone actually agrees with the idea of being violent. The reason why violence occurred is because the dominant energy of that event was being against something. When you're marching against something, it's a massive angry energy. You're appealing to the government saying, no, no, these are our streets. And that's quite, you know, that's not the kind of direction we need to be going. So if you're marching for something, whatever that may be, whatever you love, whatever you're appreciative for, whatever you want for the world, imagine what kind of energy that kind of march would have. Where instead of mar marching against government corruption, or against injustice, or against warfare, or against social inequality, you march for whatever you may be appreciative of. So think about that kind of thing. Think about the kind of world that you would want instead of a monetary system. Instead of railing against the symptoms of a problem, how about you rail against the root? If you're going to rail against something, rail against the root cause of something. Okay? If, like, say, for example, if I was an oncologist and I was sitting you down, and I was saying, I'm sorry, but you've had cancer, but what we need is your tumors to grow. That's exactly what an economist is saying when they say we need economic growth. It's that we need the cancerous behavior of the system to 
Thank you very much. 